going to be on here. All right. Uh, so what I'd like to do is um, is introduce myself. My name is Susanna Moyer. And do I know anybody in the audience? Is there anybody that I know from New York School of Design at all? Mecca. Hi, Mecca. Nice to see you. All right. Anybody? And uh, am I admitting people if they come in? Let's see. I'll admit them as they come in. Um, so, so what my background is, is design. Quickly, Mecca already knows. I already introduced myself this morning to her. Uh, what my background is, is going to school at New York or um, Parsons School of Design, then uh, working in Europe initially, Paris for five years, and um, getting the opportunity to work in Couture and pret a de Luxe. So, so basically working for companies like Christian Dior, Olivier Lapidus, the son of Ted Lapidus, starting my own business there, then coming to California, back to the US after five years, and starting my own brand again, which was always my dream and is a dream of many. And doing that for 10 years and then working for other companies big and small like Liz Claiborne, um, also Hickey Freeman, which is a luxury menswear brand, back to Europe, back and forth in Italy, getting to know how to focus on the men's market. And then uh, working for other companies um, until now, the past couple of years, I've been consulting as a consultant for small brands and also teaching at Parsons and FIT, as well as a class at New York School of Design. So I really want to open this up for any questions you might have. Uh, I'm going to keep admitting people for any questions any of you might have about the industry, about what career opportunities are available to design students and or you could be thinking about one of our students this morning talked about being involved in product development. So I want to open it up and kind of kind of cover as much as I can and then pretty much give you guys an open uh, platform to ask me any questions that you want to ask uh, and and just get into different aspects of, you know, what is happening in the fashion industry? How is it growing? What is technology doing in terms of evolving for designers and the industry? Also, how is that affecting how we are focusing in the fashion industry on sustainability and how is that helping us? So I'm just gonna go through some topics. And what I think I'll do is after I touch upon these topics, I would love for you guys to just ask me questions and we can, we can get a great dialogue uh, going. So you guys don't be shy, just go ahead and ask me. I'm still letting people in. Go ahead and ask me whatever it is that you'd wanna ask. And, um, and we'll go from there. So I'm going to start with, you know, I get asked a question. Um, I will ask, I get asked this question a lot. What does a designer do, especially just coming out of school? And just coming out of school, you are a design assistant. And what I would say is it's so important for you while you're in school to take advantage of opportunities as interns. And this internship opportunity that you need to look at and curate, you need to fill that void in your resume that's going to give you some background working in fashion. I don't care if you're dressing a show or helping style something or assisting a photographer or getting an internship and working in the production area of a business, assisting a designer, sketching flats, whatever it is, you want to be inside the business and get that experience and let somebody see on your resume that you have that experience that you are able to organize yourself while you're in school to volunteer, do some internship opportunities and, and really kind of get to know the industry a little bit better. So that's the first thing. 
And a design assistant is somebody who is assisting an associate designer usually, or a senior designer, or however the rankings are within the business, you're assisting somebody else. And a lot of those duties are focusing on the garments, not necessarily so much the design aspect, but supporting the tech pack or supporting what now is happening with technology is 3D technology, which consists of Clo 3D, Style 3D, uh, Browseware. I think there's a couple other ones, but the ones that I'm very familiar with is Clo, and I just was introduced to Style 3D. So these 3D technologies are allowing design assistants and designers within the business to create and focus the technical aspect of what needs to be done on an avatar and have all of that technology form what we used to do as a in a tech pack. So that is really what's exciting for me in terms of entering into a job, a design assistant job, because for me, it's more fun than doing an illustrator flat and putting it into a very you know, complex package of information that goes to the factory with all the trim information, the fabric information, all of that, all of that is like built into the 3D process on the computer. So it's it's really interesting how 3D is, is making things more interesting as well as helping with sustainability. So the sustainable um, process with that is you can see a 3D image of what you're designing. You can check a print. You can look at where a pocket placement is. You can show this to the sales team, a merchandising team. So there's lots of things that I'm really excited about with 3D technology. Um, career opportunities, keeping on the topic, uh, just thinking about you know the product development side. So entering in again with, you know, looking at what kind of opportunities are there for, for graduating uh, seniors or graduating from a design school, product development, sourcing, looking at fabric, choosing fabric, working with the team that's placing garments in a factory, looking and making sure that everything is doing what it needs to do to get those products made. So product development is another part of what designers do when they graduate. And uh, a lot of students of mine are choosing that pathway as well. Um, other opportunities are, you know, what I think would have been great as a job is trend is becoming more and more of an opportunity. And it could be that you're working with a, a WGSN or an agency that is working on trend ideas and you are filtering in information. So there's there's all sorts of things I could go on and on, all sorts of different things that are happening um, with students that I know just getting out of school. So I think the best thing for you to do if you have this question of what do I really wanna do and what are the things that are available to me is to really go out, find a school if you haven't, figure out what you wanna do in terms of what makes you happy in a daily routine. And if it's not actually making clothes or sketching clothes, there's amazing things that you can do besides just focusing on the design process. Um, I spoke a little bit about 3D and that for me is the most important technology that is allowing, at least for myself, you guys, I really, if I had to get, have gotten out of school and sit at the computer and do illustrator flats and then process those into a tech fact, that wouldn't have been what I would wanna do. Um, and that's what many companies do, but what's happening is technology is evolving with 3D and it's much more fun to get trained and to do the 3D process. So again, that's Clo 3D, Style 3D and Browseware. Those are the top uh, companies, top um, software companies that are, are selling 
the um, the software to different businesses. And that goes from LVMH to Zara. Companies that have money are, are growing their businesses by using technology. So really important. Um, there are no contracts. I have like a list that I'm going through. Um, there are no contracts in fashion. So when you are looking for a job, uh, you really need to focus on what your, your company is that you want to work at. So for example, if you have a list of five companies, 10 companies that you find very interesting that you want to work for, there's things that you want to do when you interview. And this is even if you have an internship. So one, does the company fit into the aesthetic or what you're interested in, in terms of design? It makes it a lot easier to work for a company when you have the aesthetic and, and you're understanding what the brand is about. So you want to first ask your question, ask that question. Second question is you want to interview who is interviewing you as much as they are interviewing you. So you want to ask the questions. You want to find out what is it like to work here? What is it like in terms of a daily, you know, experience? Do you guys have a lunch break? I have had different friends of mine say, I never could leave my desk. Like it was so stressful because they expected me to get there at 830 and stay until the last person stayed, you know, so, and it could be nine or 10 at night. So you want to ask, what is the culture of the company? What is it like to work here? Uh, how, and how do you, um, how do you use technology? How do you, um, do you have people sewing in the, in the, sewing in the business, making samples, like, tell me a little bit about what you guys do. You're asking me as a potential employee or intern about things that I know how to do, things that I want to do, or whatever the conversation is, but you want to ask them as much as they are asking you questions. So I'll tell you a little secret. When I interviewed people, and I've interviewed many, many people over my, my career, if they didn't ask me any questions at the end, I did not hire them. And the reason is that I guess they weren't as interested in working for us as much as they thought because they didn't have one question. You didn't even, you didn't even ask, you know, so when do I need to be here if you want to hire me? Um, so it's really important to ask questions when you're interviewing. It shows, I don't care what you're interviewing for. I don't care if it's like a sales job or a restaurant job. You want to ask questions about how the business functions and what the expectations of you are. And that's a big one too. You always want to get, and, and this was me after, you know, I experienced a couple things is what are the job responsibilities for you and have that written in a clear document. So that you understand what it is that you are supposed to accomplish in a job. And I've had people you know, where companies didn't write a job description, I had them say, well, I wasn't supposed to do that. And, and that's when I started to kind of define, especially when I hired and onboarded somebody, I defined exactly what they were expected to do, so that there was clear communication. And that people didn't feel like they were lost, you want to feel confident about what you're doing. So again, many, many companies, I've written them from assistant designer to my own EVP of design um, job responsibility to give to the president to make sure that we were in alignment to what it was that I was supposed to do. So, so I really feel like, you know, the more you ask questions, the more you define what's expected of you, the more successful you will be in your job. I don't care what you're doing. Um, and then, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, what it is in terms of niche markets and focus markets within the fashion industry. So there's many different areas of the fashion industry and it is broken down into, of course, the big buckets, men's wear, women's wear, children's wear. 
And women's wear tends to be the more, uh, more diversified. Um, there's now unisex companies that are creating garments and creating collections that can be worn by both sexes. So, and not non-gender. You know, there's all sorts of things going on that's so amazing right now because the fashion industry itself is opening up to all sorts of different areas of design and, and also kind of bringing this inclusive and, and, and diversified market that we really didn't have. And that's what's exciting. And there's emerging markets happening within um, genderless clothing, within body positivity clothing. Uh, it, I forget the ad that I've been seeing, but it was a company that one of my students at New York School of Design was actually trying to get an internship with years ago. I think she ended up there. Um, it's on TV and it's about um, body positivity, positivity clothing that is focusing on trends for everybody. Why should somebody be, um, be without a trend? And when I was working for Liz Claiborne, we had that issue because we would we would have our petite line and we would have our women's line, which was the bigger sizes and they would be smaller and we couldn't like put any fashion. We just had to put basics in. So, so I'm really excited about the, these growing sectors in the fashion industry and, and more inclusivity um, and, and embracing different markets. Uh, and uh, I think that I just wanted to cover these topics because I'm not sure who's out there, who who you all are, but I wanted to open up some of these ideas and see what kind of questions you guys would have and begin with that. So if anybody has a question, please feel free to just either raise your hand or just, I don't know how we're doing it today, but does anybody have any questions for me of what I've kind of covered so far? No, you guys don't have any questions. Hi, Susanna. I have a question. Hi, Asana. it's me, Sana. Sana, how are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Good. So, uh, my question is: In these days, I'm looking a technical designer, uh, uh, but all designers wants a bachelor degree. So, can you, you tell me about that? Yeah, you have that issue. So, technical design. I, I skipped that. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, Technical designers are are really, really trained to have all this knowledge stepping out of school. So, mm -hmm. Sana, I hate to tell you that mm -hmm. a technical design degree on a BFA or, you know, a, a four year program or even like a two year technical design program at FIT that I would say to you is hyper important because of all the responsibility that technical mm -hmm. designers have. So you have your designers designing and mm -hmm. then designers are connected at the hip with the technical designer. And, and this relationship is really important and the company relies on the ideas from design and the technical aspect of getting the garment made by the technical designer mm -hmm. so the thing is is that if something goes wrong with the garment it's the technical designer that gets into trouble because either yeah. the measurements off or the um the corrections of the fitting and those changes you know, maybe didn't get put in correctly. So, so the tech, a technical designer has a very large responsibility in getting the garments made the way that they need to get made. So my advice, I hate to tell you, mm -hmm. you're probably going to want to go get at least a two-year degree. You've got a great start. I know you, you're such mm -hmm. a good student, um, but it's going to be very hard unless you know somebody um, to get a job as a technical design assistant. Now, if you know mm. somebody or if you've, um, another way that is a possibility, but I'd have to ask somebody is to get very good at Clo 3D or one of the 3D 
um, technologies either. Oh, I mean, I have somebody you can speak to at um, at Clout or at um, Style 3D. I guess if you became a master of that, possibly mm -hmm. um, you could break in a little bit faster because there's not that many people it's growing but there's not that many people that are trained and a lot of people are a lot of companies are converting to 3d technology so can you tell me you know me right so can you tell me where should i apply like i know you gave me one number i remember yeah so apply to where what are you thinking are you thinking about talking to somebody for um 3d technology or are you thinking of applying to um, thinking about like pattern making saying something like you know so so what it, what exactly do you want to do you want to go you want to take more classes or you want to uh, for now no i want to take uh, i want i want to go fit but it not now like after september i want to okay apply. so but you'd no, apply september for the spring semester mm -hmm. okay so you want what what exactly do you want to do sana actually i'm looking for a job in these days i'm not gonna apply for it like uh, so you're because looking i'm for a job yeah so you are looking to do pattern making is that what you said yes because i know like i'm better in pattern making and swing so that's why i'm looking for that so Rosie, I, I think you know Rosie, right? Rosie, uh -huh. uh, yeah, she told me to, you can apply in technical designer. So that's why. So, okay, so this is the deal with pattern making. So not many, once, mm -hmm. once the production started to go overseas, the pattern mm -hmm. makers dried up. I'm gonna tell you like back in the day, and I'll go back mm -hmm. like maybe 15 years. When you walk down Seventh Avenue mm -hmm. during lunchtime, there were clusters of pattern makers that were talking outside. There were the Italians. There, there were you know people that I would see. I'd walk past and like say hello to these pattern makers. That mm -hmm. isn't existing anymore. So there's not a lot of hands-on pattern making going on right now because mm -hmm. the technology is either in tech pack web pdm web plm systems or with browseware clo or style 3d so there's not a lot of pattern making jobs out there period mm -hmm. and not a lot of pattern makers anymore and um people really aren't focusing on that just because it's gone to digital um mm -hmm. so that being said thinking about a, a job as a technical designer, we're back at where we were talking about how difficult it is to be a technical designer and how really going back to school is what you need to do. Now, you could talk to Esther and see okay. if she has any ideas because mm. she is a master at pattern making and she's working for, um, I'm gonna try to remember, She's been working at a company for over 20 years and it's more, um, you know, they, I don't, I think they have a pattern maker and Esther has been helping with patterns and sewing and finishing and garments. So I would ask Esther, she would be the best person that I would know that would actually have maybe an idea for you. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Sana. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Who else had the question? Hello, Susanna. Hi. Ed, it is Natalie. Maybe you remember me. Yes, I do. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good, good. Uh, I'm looking for internship. Wherever what you want, what I gonna do because my English, you know, no perfect. Yeah. But maybe there's a company i mean your english wasn't bad um you were learning and learning and learning when we were yes, together step by step, yes. and it's all about the practice and i told you when i was in paris i, I was terrible in the beginning you yes. know so don't let that block you how is your sketching and your designing going my sketching maybe uh, no perfect i like 
sketch, but no, maybe 3D. It's a little bit, uh, I can learn. 3D. So the quote, are you talking about the yes. 3D technology? Yes. Now that would be something really interesting for you because the language yes. <laughs> is yes. the software. It's, it's really learning that. Now, all of you can go on and I can put it on the chat. Anybody can go on YouTube and look at Clo 3D technology, or you can go on uh, the Clo 3D um, website. Now there is Style 3D. And you can go on Style 3D as well. And you can see what it is. I would say go and look at it and see if it's something, one, that you're interested in. But this is like the most, for me, when I did the training five years ago, this was the most exciting thing happening. And yeah. if you dig into it and start looking at it, um, honestly, it's, it's so exciting. And I will tell you what happened is I took the training and I was with um, a friend of mine from Parsons and uh, basically um, we got shown what this was and we both like looked at each other and was like this is the future of fashion it is the future so yeah. with this technology and why I'm so excited about it is there's a couple things you can create garments that look so real that you can actually pull those garments into a website and sell them or get reaction for these garments without even making or buying fabric. You can put them up and you can actually sell them. So a friend of mine was doing cashmere accessories and she's a master at technology. And she basically was working with circular Shima knitting machines and had this concept and she put these things in different colors. She didn't have the samples. She didn't photograph them. She put them on the website. I have person students that are creating fashion shows, virtual fashion shows. So the metaverse, 3D imaging, uh, avatars, this is our future. And so the more that you educate yourself on what's out there, and if you, this is something that you enjoy and wanna do, there's a ton of opportunities out there. So, so maybe that's a good idea for you. And you can just, for free, you can just look at these websites. You can go and look at YouTube videos. You can explore it just within, you know, your own home and kind of see what it is. And I've been trying to get, I will say, Michelle, if you're watching, I have been trying to get New York School of Design to get Clo 3D or some sort of 3D training for, I think it's at least four or five years now because I really believe it's the future. And it gives you an edge on, on the design world because not all the schools are training in it. Parsons is the one, because I was with my friend Francesca who became the Dean at Parsons um, during COVID. And they were like, oh, we're in COVID and we're virtual and we are going to quickly integrate Clo into the curriculum. So every student at Parsons that was during COVID and one class before that, they pulled in Clo as part of the design process. And I can tell you, it was the smartest thing to do because we were all sitting at home and it was a great way to integrate um, this whole learning um, when we couldn't be making patterns or sewing in class. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice I to have a you. question. Uh huh. This is Supriya. Um, nice seeing you. So, Hi, what was the technology you? called on YouTube? You said. So can be I know that there's Clo 3D. I put it in the chat. Did it go in the chat, you guys? No, it did not. Let me try it again. If you can spell it out, we'll just. Yeah, let me it. see if I can get it to do it again. So it's sure. Clo, C L O, three. Okay. D. 
I'm going to send, let's see if it'll go again. Did it go? Yes, it came. It came through. Thank All you. All right. The other one is style 3D. This one's newer. It's Chinese. I like it better. I like it better because it is connected to a process of creating prints pattern and taking away that that other step that you need to create print and pattern within the software. So I'm liking it more. Um, it's got more, and I'm sure Chloe's going to come in and do, you know, they're going to come in and do what they did and they just keep doing this. So uh, look at, look and see what you think. Okay. Is this surely, thank you for that, Susanna. Is this like a free software or it's a paid software? So the thing with, um, I'm not sure on the pricing of Style 3D, but Clo has a student um, rate. Okay. And I think it was at one point $25 a month. Okay. So, so you could probably contact them on the website and ask some questions. Perfect. But I just, I, once you see it, you will, you will, I mean, you can create virtual showrooms. You can do a fashion show with the avatars walking. I mean, you can you can put your model in wow. outer space. I, I have a, I have a, wow. I have a student. it was crazy. <laughs> I had a student. She was um, a gamer, so she was high okay. into gaming, doing all sorts of different platforms. Really techie girl, and she was bringing in gaming software to like morph the avatar to look more like her i mean changing the features it was like really incredible and that's the direction our world our world is going into wow yeah very virtual so once thank you, you start this piece what us. thank you um, for sharing this piece with us it, i think it's it's a very trend setting very futuristic technology uh, in fashion industry. So thank you for sharing it with us. You're welcome. I, I'm ex I don't get excited about a lot of things, but I'm telling you once I did the training and I'm not great at technology. I, I, um, I like working with my hands. I, you know, but once I took that training, Supriya, I was like, wow, mm -hmm. this, I could have done that because I like seeing what happened with it. And I like the movement of it. It was artistic in a way for me. Um, not just drawing mm -hmm. flat, you know, on Illustrator. Right. So I know NYSD has like a program or a course um, in the certificate program, they have the 3D fashion design. Does that cover Clo? Um, ask Omar. Ask Omar. Okay. I don't know if they're saying 3D in terms of 3D development of a garment, um, but okay. I'm hoping that they get a 3D some sort of, you know, class going soon because it's it's just to me it'll allow you guys to elevate yourself and your skill set. Right. Yeah, it sounds fabulous like virtual fashion show, virtual oh. you know, imaging of yourself in in the avatar you know, without even like touching a fabric without exactly. any pre, pre, prerequisite steps. It's amazing. Exactly, exactly. And also what's happening with design students out of Parsons, uh, Central St. Martin, these top schools is your portfolio has 3D, Clo 3D in it or style 3D. So you mm -hmm. can take and screenshot your images and put it into your portfolio. And you can also send video of your, of your portfolio within, you know, Clo. So you can send them, you know, what you're doing in terms of the, the 3D aspect. Wow, very cool. Yeah, take a look at the YouTube videos. Like I think, and, and okay, I'll tell you a secret. Michelle already knows. Um, I don't, I think I told Omar, but when I came back from the training, we had James working at, at uh, New York School of Design and I came back and I'm like, oh my gosh, James. And he was a tech guy. Like he was teaching at Parsons Illustrator and Photoshop and all these things. And, and I came back, I'm like, James, you need to see this. And so I showed him, he was like, oh my gosh. And he, because he was more apt, more techy than I was. And for me, I was doing other things. I wasn't, you know, that wasn't my pathway. He basically, every time I came into New York School of Design and, and saw him, he's like, look what I did, look what I did. So at home, 
he was at home at night looking at the videos, YouTube videos, figuring out everything. He had Esther, you need to know about patterns. You need to know what the shape of patterns are. So he needed to learn about patterns. So he did some investigation with Esther. He's like, what does a pan pattern look like? Like really, you know, had to get his mind around the, the idea of what a pattern looks like. And he taught himself how to do this, like amazing. And so every wow. time I saw him, he's like, and then there was a job opportunity at Clo. So that's another opportunity. Clo, these 3D software companies are exploding and they're teaching. And so he goes, Susanna, there's, there's a job opportunity. Should I take it? And I'm like, if you, you love this, and this is the thing, guys, you have to do what you love. I don't love like tech. I, James loved tech. So he actually went for the interview and got it at close. So he's actually training people all over the world. And that's his job right now. And he quit his job at Parsons. He quit his job at New York School of Design. And he went to club. But that's a job opportunity as well. So that's he, an amazing story. It's 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 so cool. And he is there. Yes. And, and I, you know, talk to him and you know, ask him questions about it. And it's a fantastic story because you have to do what you love. And he really wanted it. So he spent hours at night practicing. So anybody can do it. You just have to like, you do have to know the pattern side of it because one side of the screen is the pattern being developed. And the other side is your avatar being dressed with the pattern as you do it. And it happens at the same time. So Sorry, can you tell us a little bit more about you need to understand the pattern? What in the pattern do you need to understand for this? Yep. So, so simply you need to know what construction looks like within a flat pattern. So when you're working in these 3D softwares, you've got your screen and half the screen is the pattern. And the other half is your avatar. And then you have all of these icons. You've got little tiny sewing machines up at top and you are digitally sewing the garment together. So when you're digitally sewing the garment together, you have to know like, the sleeve, you know, the shape of the sleeve that is going to set into the armhole or, you know, I'm going to sew together the seam underneath the arm first, and then I'm going to set the sleeve into the pattern, however, which way you're going to do it. But you need to know what these pattern pieces look like, and you need to have an understanding on how things kind of go together. Wow. Okay. So you so, need to kind of understand how the puzzle fits, all the pieces fit in. Okay. That you put it so well. Exactly. Thank you. You're that's, welcome. That's great, Susanna. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? I have a question. Hi. Um, um, well, I took the 3D program at New York School of Design. I didn't uh -huh. use browseware. Is that you guys use browseware? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you like it? Because it's very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically the same. I, I saw the, same. The, the Clo program and it's the same. It functions the same way. So it's exactly, exactly. And um, so did fun. you like, did you like working in yeah. 3D? Yeah, I, I've actually done some things. I'm from Chile in South America. Uh huh. So here, nobody does this. So I'm like, hi guys. <laughs> exactly really exactly cool. yeah. and i think i remember meeting you yeah and, yeah and i did we talk maybe we talked about it in class i think um the 3d but it's so nobody in chile yeah nobody actually yeah. nobody yeah. and you're ahead of the game yeah so it's it's really cool but i wanted to know if in fashion in general it, it, is there any like online like um international internships jobs especially with um pretty and all these online world not that i know of on an international basis i mean there's stylecareers.com but that's the us 
But yeah. what I like about you guys, stylecareers.com, what I like about them and the guy, I'll put, I'll put it in the chat. Um, I follow him. I'm connected with him on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And you guys want to be on LinkedIn. Um, his name is Chris Kidd. I'll put it in here. And he put something on LinkedIn that he was looking for um, designers or whatever. And I, I basically, I said, Chris, I will let my students know. And he was like, thank you, Susanna. I mean, he's such a nice guy. So on LinkedIn, you can connect with him, but you can also pull his website up. I don't okay. think he has anything international, but you never know. You never know, yeah. <laughs> but what I like is he's got the West Coast, the Midwest and the East Coast where he posts jobs and it's really great. And I, I feel like you can go on his website and take a look at it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put it in here too. It's really easy, but I'm going to put it in. Um, there is a company. Um, I think it's careers maybe. Um, it is um, 24 seven. It might be 24 seven careers or 24 seven fashion if you're gonna Google it. Um, they may be a little bit more international. So they've been around for a long time. I love 24 seven because they are an agency that I've used quite a bit in terms of getting freelance in. Once I get the freelance in and a job opportunity opens up, we've hired people over and over again over the years. And Celeste Budas, she started the company. And I basically, when I had my business, if I had time, I wanted to keep my hand in the, in the industry. And when she called me and I had time, I would run and do freelance jobs. So right. they might have an international part to their business now. But Google, Google international fashion yeah. recruitment. See what see what comes up. Perfect. <laughs> hey, nice Thank to see you. you. Nice to see you. Anybody else have any questions? No, nothing. I'm trying to think of anything. No, that this was great. This was a great session, Susanna. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you guys work on your resumes too, like, you know, and don't take anything off. That is something you've done in the past. If you worked in a restaurant, if you worked retail, keep it on because people like to see that you've actually worked and done stuff and dealing with people is not easy. So jobs that you have to deal with people, they like to see that you've done that. Uh, also list separately your skills in terms of computer skills. I always get students forgetting to put, you know, certain things in and it's nice to just put them in a chunk. So if it's Illustrator, Photoshop, Browseware, whatever, it's good to highlight those things. And uh, don't be shy, send out things. Again, I told my class this morning and my a lot of my, um, my in-person New York School of Design, even Chile, who knows what shops are around, what young designers are around. Go to the stores, you guys. Go to the stores. If, okay, so for example, so for example, if Josefina is in Chile and you are in Santiago, which I've been, um, and you're walking around and you see a really cool shop that looks like it's a designer or you find, find out like if there's anybody with an, a new business. This is a perfect opportunity. You go in and those small shops, even in New York City, like Mark Jacobs, he goes to a shop in New York City. It's his like home base, right? And his office is in New York. So whoever's working in that store has a direct connection to Mark or the HR department and the studio. Um, so go visit, go chit chat with the people that are standing there selling stuff that are just like bored to death. Go talk to them and see if you can get a name of somebody to send your resume to, or, hey, I'm a student or I'm a new designer and I would love an opportunity to do an internship. Get your foot in the door. And so I think three people last 
session of New York School of Design, or maybe it was the session, they went out and they actually got internships and or jobs doing this. So you have nothing to lose. Just all I'm gonna tell you is just keep working on your craft. Don't stop sketching. Don't stop sewing. Keep doing it. Always keep your sketchbook. I know I told all you guys, I gave you that book, The Fashion Designer Sketchbook by Sharon Rothman. Best book ever. You've got in that book is an interview of Peter Doe. And also you've got, and I'm gonna forget his name, the designer that at, was at Tom Brown with the women's wear, I told my class this morning. Now he's the creative director of Scaparelli and Scaparelli is over the top gorgeous. So he was at FIT. And this designer, the fashion designer sketchbook by Sharon Rothman, it's almost the most important book because it really shows you the inside thinking of what you need to do with a creative designer's journal. And your journal is really an open book to how you process your work and how you think. And people want to see that. So it's something that you need to take to interviews is a design journal. Super important. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Hello, hi. I'm. Do you hear me? Yeah. Uh, perfect. I'm. Call, I'm Alexandra. I'm calling actually from in from Switzerland. Oh. <laughs> I work. I work here for Hugo Boss, but in finance department. And actually, I was always interested in working in fashion. Uh, however, I end, end up only in finance. Um, I would like to change for 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 something else. And I'm just thinking, what kind of studies should I I take? for example, to, to change for another, maybe in like another department, or also I, what do you think about the, the job of personal shopper nowadays? So, so, so for luxury, there's such a growth market in certain areas for personal shopping. Mm -hmm. um, that is really interesting. You just have to find the right place. So in right. New York, there's Bergdorf Goodman that is, I don't know if you know Bergdorf Goodman, but they have personal mm. shoppers. Nordstrom's has personal shoppers. The Americana, which mm -hmm. is in Manhasset on Long Island, lots of wealth. Uh, one girl I know is doing an internship there and mm -hmm. she absolutely loves it. And mm -hmm. she is in charge of... Um, She's an intern, but she's got her bosses that, and they've got Gucci. Oh my gosh. They've got all sorts of, um, all sorts of shops in this, this like strip kind of fancy, fancy mall. And, and she is just loving it because she'll, you know, get an assignment and basically has to, has to look for pieces within the customer's like you know whatever they're interested in and then she takes this person from store to store and says I chose this what do you think of that she loves it so that's one thing the other thing you're at Hugo Boss right yes exactly yes but um the fact is that we are um there is a reorganization going on so um, very soon I may actually be um dismissed let's say laid off um, okay. That's why I'm I'm looking looking for 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 a change, right? So after, um, yes, because I don't want to. They offer me to move somewhere else to another country, mm -hmm. but I love Switzerland and I would like to stay here. I'm just looking for opportunities opportunities now and what can I do in this time now in these few months, in order to change the job, right? To right. do something, well, for another. Mm -hmm. I think you said something super important. You want to stay in Switzerland, right? Yes, exactly. So, you know, what, what opportunities are in Switzerland? So definitely the personal shopper idea. So mm -hmm. I would pick the best stores to go into and start asking questions, go on their website, see if they have personal shopping, pretend to be somebody that wants to personal shop. All right. Right. Okay. Pretend to good, do yeah. that, mm -hmm. Right. And see what it's like. And you don't have to buy anything. 
Uh, and you could get friendly with the person that's doing that with you and say, hey, you know, I'm looking for something, but, you know, I'm looking for a dress, but I'm also interested. How do you, how did you do this? How, you know, so that's one way you could do it, especially because you want to stay in Switzerland. And then the yeah. other thing is the reason I said Hugo Boss, you're working there. I know they're in Italy, right? So, yes. um, you know, if you wanted to move, you could navigate yourself maybe to go and meet with somebody in Italy, but you want to stay in Switzerland. So I don't know if you've done any sewing or sketching or anything, but I'm sure there's, mm, this is cool. This is it. No, I, I haven't done any, any kind of, any kind of th this kind of studies. No, I'm working to 10, 10 years. So I'm already 37 actually. And um, 10 years I'm working in, in, um, in finance. But with my personality as open as I am, I feel like finance, finance is not for me. Also, I speak five languages, so Italian too. That's so, so great. So, so I could, like, I just saw that maybe Switzerland is a potential for like wealth clients, right? Because yep. it's, it's quite a rich country. Um, and the only thing is, I don't know where to start. This is a big problem of mine, to be honest. Like I don't have, let's say, um, Sorry for using it, saying it, but I don't have balls. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> to, do. To go to okay. the show. <laughs> you listen. You are going to go out and you are going to find the stores that you're interested. More high end stores are going to be having the personal shoppers, and just go and pretend. Go on the websites, find out if they have it, make an appointment, mm -hmm. and go. Go with I don't know a friend or your mom or whoever, and. Mm -hmm and see what happens. You've got a really cool journey. Listen, the fact that you can mm -hmm. speak five languages and that you're in Switzerland, because Switzerland is such, it's such, you've got the Ger Swiss, German, French, Swiss, you've got all sorts of mm -hmm. opportunity with language. I would say this sounds like your pathway. This sounds really right. fun. I mean, the, the idea with to, to go to the shop and, and pretend to be a personal shopper is actually amazing. I didn't think of it, actually. So thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> yeah, do this some research. Go yeah. and, and you know, pretend and then get, get chummy with whoever it is and say, yeah, right. I'm looking for a dress, but how did you get this job, right? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. And that's with anything, thank you guys, you, you know, mm -hmm. wh whoever you can find a contact with, it helps just get your foot in the door and learn more about, do you really want to do this or not? Right. Mm -hmm. well, we have a sample, say, is sample, we have a sample sales uh, with our clients next week and our sales managers will take me to, to show how they are selling to clients. So it's, it's also opportunity, I think, for me to see how, how does it look like? Yeah, so. that's something <laughs> that you could do as well. Right. So yes, you've yes. got the finance mm -hmm. aspect. They mm -hmm. also, you know, have planning. So right. a planner is doing the math and figuring out right. the store planning, right? So that also is something that I would think about. Right. This is a good idea as well. Yes. Okay. Because anyway, th thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because a planner works with the merchandisers and with the designers. Right. So you're in mm -hmm. this creative circle of working mm -hmm. with everybody, and it's a lot of fun. Right. Thank you very much. This was really helpful. And I will keep it in mind and I will try my best. <laughs> yeah. Thank Don't you. be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> fear, you guys, fear is only going to hinder you. It's only going to set True. you back. And my mother used to say, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I don't want to, she'd be like, call the store and ask them or go to the neighbors and see. And I'd be like, I don't want to do that. And she'd be like, what are you afraid of? They're going to like bite you or whatever. <laughs> and, and it kind of stuck in my mind because you know, I've been said no to so many times, but if I didn't do what I did, I would have never, if I didn't have the drive or the passion, I wouldn't, I would not be talking to you guys today. So just go for it. If somebody says no, I'm telling you, I've been said no to a million trillion times. And in a way, a lot of the times I got said no to, I'm like looking back going, thank God I, they said no to me because look at what else happened. You know, look at, the other opportunity that happens. So, so it's not a bad thing to be said no to. Yes, they say um, rejection is redirection. It, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, right, okay. Yeah, thank you for my side, really. <laughs>
You're welcome. And thank you for for this for this um, webinar. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, guys, it's five o'clock. I'm going to let you go. But um, I guess, you know, my students here, whatever, if you guys have any questions, of course, you can ask me. And, um, and again, you know, New York School of Design is a great place to get a lot of information to learn things to meet people. The students are amazing. Um, the teachers are amazing. It's just a great, great opportunity. Okay, guys, have a great evening or afternoon or wherever you are. Okay, and nice seeing the people that I, I haven't seen my former students. Thank you. Okay, bye, guys. Thank you. You're welcome.